Hey everybody, uh, welcome to C3 Films. Uh, we're going to do our show, It Wasn't That Good. Today we're going to be talking about Prometheus. I am Cheryl and this is... Chris. And let's and, get uh, going. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I always, whenever we watch these movies, I'm always, I always start off being like, you know what? Maybe this movie is not that bad, actually. Like, I, you start off and it's shot really awesome. It looks beautiful, and like it's really and it's really intriguing. Like with the story that's starting to be told, and you're loving the, like the VFX. The I was like, oh my gosh, the VFX in this movie st like still look good, look look better than some like 2020 films, uh, AAA like movies and it's just like wow this is like the world and the lore like man the, the the cast like oh my gosh it's so well cast Idris Elba Charlize Theron um Rumi Raypace and it's just like oh my god like there's so many like Guy Pierce oh my god there's so many good actors in this movie this movie's gonna be amazing I'm oh my, like how like did I really not like this movie how did I not like this movie and then 40 minutes in, you get to the first stupid decision that is get, that gets made in the movie by one of the main characters who has literal maps that ends up getting lost. And you're like, what is this movie? What is this logic? And it is a downward spiral from there. There is so much good lore that is set up. The movie is beautifully shot. Like I, I, I can't get over how good this movie just visually looks. And then when you get down to a storytelling point of view and a storytelling perspective, and when you really break it down, the stuff that happens literally only happens because of stupid people. And it's not like they're supposed to be stupid. They're supposed to be smart. But like essentially, this movie takes place over the course of two days and all that really happens is that they show up to a planet there's a locked room they open the room and they find the thing that they're looking for and the thing that looks for that looks for them that they're looking for wants to kill them that basic story is fine everything else that happens in the middle that leads up to that point makes no sense and is so dumb i i actually felt physical rage rewatching this movie <laughs> but i'm i'm sorry i i might be i'm getting ahead of myself you go ahead and and tell that's me the what end of thought. the show. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, like, yeah, I honestly, I was like, I just remember the first time watching it being very confused, and mm -hmm. then um, the second time I watched it, I was like, okay, now I'm very bored and confused, and. <laughs> And, like, yes, everyone is making these stupid decisions. And I was just like, what is the point of Waylon being a secret? And the point of um, mm -hmm. Vickers, I think, uh, Charlize Theron's character, being yeah. Waylon's daughter, a secret. Why is that all a secret? Um, and, like, what is even the point of having the crew? Like, why did the crew need to go if David was going to do everything anyway. So, like, what was the point of everyone being there? Not really sure. Besides, like, so that everyone could die. Sorry, spoiler alert. I forgot, oh, yeah. we I forgot to we tell everyone alert. that. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Um, but if you watch the movie, I mean, it's in the title of our show. It wasn't that good. You don't need to really worry about it. Yeah, it's, um, just relax. <laughs> don't even watch yeah. it. It was bad. <laughs> And, and see, I don't think it's like there's some good things in there. It's just, for instance, um, and like so, the thing that doesn't work for me. One of the things, made things that doesn't work for me is this whole because it seems like they want to tell this other like underlying story that was like maybe it was there in uh, in the first couple of drafts and then just disappeared, but remnants of it still remained um, because it doesn't really make sense how because you got to remember. They get there and they have six hours of daylight and they only get to explore for six hours. And after getting to an alien world, discovering that they were right, which is a reason enough to be excited, we were right. There were things actually here. Like they Vickers pulls the two lead characters who are with each other into a room and basically tells them so so much as she doesn't believe that they're right, but they're doing it anyway because Waylon believed. And so, okay, fine. But then they get there and they realize they were right. Not only were they right, but this entire facility 
is connected to these beings that have roots in like human culture and human DNA. And they find that out later that their DNA is the same, which this is science. These are scientific breakthroughs. Why is this man, the husband, getting drunk and feeling like a failure after only exploring for six hours after traveling here for two years and actually finding new information and information that proves them right? See, I asked myself that too because that confused me. But then I was like, oh, I was about to write it down as like I didn't get why this was happening. But I realized that the reason why he was so upset is because they were all dead and he really wanted to meet them. That's why he was upset. But but like, I get that, but then I don't think that is enough to like act like you, you lost out on everything and like waste your life away kind of thing where like you just drink yourself to death kind of thing. Yeah, because you also still have more, like, they find out there's still more rooms to discover. They've only explored for six hours. They haven't seen everything that there is to see. There is a chance, like they find out later, that they can find they can find one that might be in stasis. Or there might be something that you're missing. There might be a way to contact them through this ship that is connected to their culture. There's so many other ways that this this discovery can lead him to what he wants. So it feels very strange that he just immediately just falls into I'm a failure before you and after six hours. Um, but what you said makes sense. Yeah. I could see being disappointed, but failure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He looked like he was washed up. <laughs> right. He just, he's, like, he's, he's drinking straight from the bottle. He's like, I'm done. Yeah. Um, and then what was the point of, of David poisoning the guy? Exactly. Like, so I was like, okay, maybe he's doing it so that like, he can um, get him to impregnate um, the main character and she can make the alien baby like she kind of does. But I thought maybe that's why like he wants that so he can bring that science home to Waylon. Like that's what Waylon's motive is. But then again, I asked like, then what's the point? Like if David's going to do everything, what's the point of having everyone else there? Like it just... I didn't well, here, get his motives um, other than that he was doing what Waylon wanted him to do. But then right. also, like, why is it a secret? Like, why can't everyone be on board with this? Like, why can't everyone know what he wants? Because that's what they also want. And it seems like... Right. And the ultimate motive for David is to have a conversation with the engineers to find a way to make it so that Wayland can live, can still live so that he doesn't die. That's, that's essentially what they want to do. There's this other storyline where it's all about like finding the alien. Like these are from other alien movies where it's like finding the alien and bringing it back because earth wants to weaponize it and stuff like that. And I think that's, that's what they're trying to like imply in this movie by him, you know, doing the thing where he poisons him to the impregnation to the thing. Um, but, but then, but that disappears. That's not, there's nothing to back that up other than my knowledge of other movies. Um, and the implication that that's might be what's happening. But even then, how do you know that he's going to like impregnate her? First of all, she couldn't give birth, which they made sure that they made sure to tell us in like a straight, in a very strange way. I felt in a very strange scene to just make it sure that it was out there. But, she can't get pregnant, so you have no way of knowing that she could. Second of all, the guy feels like a failure, and he's drinking. You have no, you have no way of knowing that he's going to be going back into his room and things are going to pop off the way you want. He might go back to the room and just pass out because he feels like such a failure and he's getting drunk. So, so once again, you don't know that that's actually what's going to happen. And then secondly, I mean, and then thirdly, I don't know what number I'm on anymore. Uh, then <laughs> it's just too many to count. <laughs> nextly, he basically gets he gets burnt he gets burnt and incinerated and there's nothing for you to like get from that so as far as a story for as, like in reality that's how things work out things you try don't happen but as far as a story goes that 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 storyline goes nowhere it literally goes nowhere and it only serves to get the character killed but it gives us no information about about what it was that he did like what he was trying to do and it doesn't even and it doesn't tell us anything more about his motives, about who who David is. So we get no real information from that other than Waylon is okay. I mean, not Waylon, other than that David is okay killing another human being. And 
maybe it was because the human being was being a dick to him. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I feel like there were just elements in like scenes that um, Ridley wanted in the movie, and they just mm-hmm. had to find a way to make it happen, even if it doesn't make sense. So they just try to make it make the most sense as possible, so that they could have those things in the movie. Um, I mean, there's there's stuff like like the 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 progression of the aliens and like i i don't really understand it because it happens so many ways like how do these aliens like how many aliens are there and like how do they reproduce exactly because there's impregnation there's um like putting a drop of that fluid and and having him drink it and then have like having intercourse like the characters have to have intercourse like that's a host and then there's like the whole thing about like you know the aliens like going into the throat in the mouth. Um, yeah and then I, I don't know and then th- there's like there's like then a, the zombie. There's like yeah, and then there's a zombie. There's a worm version. There's like a squid version. There's a giant octopus version, and then it becomes a mini alien that looks like the alien movie. So I'm just like, oh, is this the, uh, is this like the um, the 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 time before the first alien movie? I don't know what's going. On. I think I think it's intended to be, but even the alien you see at the end of the movie for that stinger doesn't look like the traditional xenomorph yeah it actually still looks different because the, the way its mouth opens is different it doesn't have like an inner mouth that's a te- that connected to a tube that comes out it's like a mouth that just kind of goes out a little bit uh so it's not even like the, the, the that alien but that doesn't make any sense anyway because when they get to the actual structure there is a carving an engraving of the queen alien like floating uh, on top of like the actual thing to suggest that they've already created the alien creatures. So there's just the story is just it's a mess. It's all over the place. And then, just like pick one, <laughs> pick one, yeah, pick and one. Then roll with it. I don't know why there are so many different forms and like different ways for them to kill every. I mean, I get like having different ways to kill everyone, but that's why I'm saying I feel like they just wanted these like different pieces of imagery on like how people die and stuff like that. Like everyone has to die a different way. And like, there's oh, a yeah, lot of they people thought... to kill. <laughs> yeah. Cause they are like 17 crew members and they wanted things to look cool, but it's just, it still has to like be based in certain logic. Like these, the first of all, the map people who leave first don't, they shouldn't be getting lost. And if they did, then there needs to be some type of malfunction with their equipment, but it makes no sense that they, they didn't get out, but the people that left after them did. So that doesn't make sense. Now they're stuck there. Why are they exploring? They're actually like actively exploring as opposed to just going near the entrance, staying outside of like maybe where they would be hit by the storm, just like a little bit inside, but near the entrance. They're not near the entrance. They're exploring. And that they also have makes those no probes. Sense. Those probes are yeah. literally building Maps. a map. So why can't they just like – my first question was like why are they going in and probing it? Instead of probing it and then looking at the map Waiting. and being like, oh, let's go there and check that out. Right. No, exactly. Because <laughs> they're trying to move it along for the story. That's why. And then, like, why does the biologist who's on an alien planet see something, see something that looks akin to an alien space snake and think that it's cute and needs and that he needs to touch it when literally before they were saying – hey, we're getting a ping that there's something alive and they were responding, something's alive and they're freaking out. And then they actually find something that is alive and then they're not freaking out. Exactly. It may, it's, <laughs> it, it's, it's disconjointed. It's all over the place. And it's really unfortunate because the basic level of the story I find interesting of these people who think that they're going to go find their creators and their creators end up being people that were creating military weapons and they're just like anybody else. And it's like, you thought that you were talking to gods, but really you're talking to a soldier. And that soldier is like basically designing weaponry of mass destruction that ends up being something that gets unleashed upon the galaxy that causes causes problems for Ripley and anybody else that comes into contact with aliens in the future. That is interesting to me. That actually is very interesting to me. But it is carried out so poorly that... The visuals cannot save it. And that and why does David say this line of 
doesn't everybody want to see their parents dead? And I thought about that. I was like, where does that come from? Is that like a Freud thing or something? But like, I can't think of any situation where I like people instinctively want their parents to be dead. But I, maybe that's touching on some type of like philosophy or something that I'm missing. But when he said that line, I was like, I, I, I don't think that's true. I that know. doesn't feel true. <laughs> <laughs> At least she says I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I don't either. Right? <laughs> and I don't know any, any of my friends that do. I don't know anyone I mean, that does. I mean, like, that's why people go to jail. <laughs> yeah. And so, I, anyway. Yeah. Like, uh, and I then, have of course, then, yeah. one really, really big problem that I did not forget. It was like the one thing that I remembered from the first time I watched it. And that was mm-hmm. when um, Charlize Theron and um, God, I can't remember her name. Nomi Ray, Nomi Ray Pace. Yeah. Um, so the two of them are like running away from the spaceship that like, that that's like rolling. Mm-hmm. And like, how about going that way or that way instead of in the path of where the spaceship is rolling. <laughs> like, if you were, like, I would get it if, like, it was too wide and you would never make it if you, unless you, like, went, you know, gradually or diagonally. Like, you're, in so, like you're, you're in a canyon and it falls in a canyon, so there really is no other way to run. Yeah. Except straight. Yeah, and exactly. But, like, in the time that they were running straight, they would have had enough time to, like, go left or right. And then, like, she literally, like, trips. And she's like, oh, why don't I just roll a roll couple Roll to feet? the side. And which means it lives. wasn't even that long. And then it falls over. And, like, she's, like, not running like all you have to do is like look at where it's going to fall and head that direction and you'll be fine but i guess she got lucky under some rocks and i'm just like all mm-hmm. right whatever and the sh- it's not even like the thing is like super like big and like it's not even like a dome it's shaped like a u yeah which means there's so much space in between either of its mm-hmm. corners and it's just it's very it, it <laughs> i find this movie very frustrating and I think it's frustrating to me because I think this movie could have been a lot better than it actually was. It probably could um, have. And it's just, it, there, I there are, I see, I see the elements. I see, I see, um, good things in there. But I mean, when when you really break down the story and you stop and realize that the only things that happened happened because people were being stupid, not even because like, you know, some the 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 weather made it so that these people are stuck and then they fall asleep because they have no choice. And then the evil space snake went, got them while they were sleeping, but they were sleeping near the entrance. And what, what could they have done? They, they couldn't get out. There was nothing they could do. Like all the bad things that happened throughout the whole middle of the movie are caused by human error. And that's the thing that I find so frustrating when the movie is intending to be this smart philosophical think piece. Mm-hmm. Cause it's not, it's supposed to be more than just an alien movie. That's, I mean, that's what the intention is. So I just, so I find it very frustrating, unfortunately, but I think that's why it's on this show. I didn't think it was that good. It wasn't that good. Nope. So that's going to be it, guys. We're going to wrap it up. We went a little bit of a tangent at the end there, but what did you guys think about Prometheus? And once again, this is not to say that if you like the movie, then you're, you have bad taste in movies. It just means that the movie didn't work for us. So we don't mean to like make you guys feel bad. We're not insulting you. We're not talking about the fact that you like the movie, it's bad. We didn't like the movie because we didn't think it was it was that good, and these are the reasons why. And it's fine if you disagree with us. And if you did disagree with us, let us know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, if you give us a like, share, subscribe. But um, even if you don't, though, I've been Chris, and this has been... Cheryl, and we will see you guys next time.